and we are going to get going with this. So keep keep coming in, keep joining the the um, virtual webinar, um, the today's meet session, the Smart VUG. Hey Leslie from Illinois. So if you want to, you can join. You can let us know who you are on the question or the chat panel, or you can go um, uh, in the. Um, today's meet section. Mary, you're probably muted because I've muted you, so we'll talk about that as well. So lots of great questions today. Sounds like we have some yeah. people that want to chat. Yeah. So let's get going. We're really excited and I'm going to turn it over to Tara to tell us all about this, um, this virtual user group. Sure. So good evening, everyone. Um, well, evening for us over here on the West Coast. I mean the East Coast because it's about 5 p.m. over here, 4 p.m. over there for Heather. Um, so we are combining forces, basically. Um, I'm, I'll talk about where I am um, in, in a few minutes. But basically, Heather and I are both education consultants for SMART. And Heather was doing a virtual users group over on the West Coast. And I was doing one over here on the East Coast, and we are on the same team, so we just felt like, you know, why are we both doing these? Why don't we combine them and have an even larger uh, group of users here that, that connects once a month or so? Um, so with that, we decided to kick this off uh, this month, and we're actually going to be transitioning into a new name. Um, we're going to be calling our virtual users group Teacher to Teacher because although Heather and I want to share things that we know about SMART, um, we really want this to be about, about teachers sharing with other teachers because you're the users in the classroom um, that are using our SMART products every day. So what you're going to see over the next couple months is the transition from the North American virtual users group or something similar um, that you're used to seeing, and you're going to see us transition into something called uh, teacher to teacher, and that kind of also goes along with some another initiatives that Smart has um, as a company, um, working with our resellers um, and working with our, our technical people that are out and help install our products. So this is also kind of just going along with the company initiatives that we have. Um, but we are really, really excited to be together and excited to hear from all of you and excited about the large uh, group of people that we have that decided to join tonight. Um, our, our, our attendee list is, is, is high, so that's very, very exciting for us. So Very um, much so. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce you all to those of you that don't know me. Uh, my name is Tara Mattingly, and um, I am an education consultant for smart. My contact information is up there, and Heather, I don't know how it, what you feel about getting in touch with you best, but definitely for me, um, my email is the best because a lot of times I'm on the road and connecting with people in different time zones. So I'm going to say definitely the best way to reach out to me if, if, if you need me is to send me an email, and I promise I will get back. To, I will get to you as soon as possible. Um, so Heather and I just wanted to share just a little bit of information. Um, about ourselves. So Heather, if you want to um, reveal one of my one of my boxes there. So probably the the most passionate thing besides being an education consultant is my family, and I have six children. Um, the youngest being the the little the little twins. They are 16 months old, and our oldest is Kelly. She's 16, and the boys are in between. So prized possessions there, are my children. Um, and what else about Tara? I live in Maryland. Um, and Heather, if you want to make that a little bit larger, um, that picture for me. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I'm about 40 miles south Whoops. of Washington, D.C. So not sure if, if anyone is familiar with, with that area on the West Coast. But where that little red X is, that's actually where I live in a little town called La Plata, Maryland, um, close to the water, close to the bay. Um, but that's, that's where I am connecting with you all from. And then down at the bottom of the screen, just uh, my past, I was a teacher, of course. I taught first grade and third grade. Um, when I left the classroom, I became part of administration in an elementary school. And then from there, I went up to central office and worked um, in the Title I Instructional Technology Department. Um, hence is where I came in contact with SMART. 
So just a little bit about my background so you get to know me, and we're going to move on to Heather. All right. I'm going to... I think I have my, so some of you might have, um, I left this, the full border, so if you saw that little border, that's what that is, so I'm going to take that off of there, so that's, if you've ever seen that little blue line, that's what that is, so it's under the view. So I'm Heather Lamb, and as Tara said, um, was doing this um, for the, kind of the Texas region and had some other people outside. Um, my contact information is, is as well up here, and I don't mind um, to help people um, as, as both Tara and I do, and, you know, virtually connect with you. I put, I'll start off with me, I put a little um, mortarboard on my head. I'm not there yet, and probably won't be there until probably 2017, but I've started a PhD program. So people call me crazy. That's probably a good word, but um, I've started, I just almost completed my first year. So I'm, it's in educational technology, and it's, a program through a local university, and I'm not doing it online. It's a blended learning model, so it's been quite interesting. Please feel feel free to feel free feel for me this summer as I'm taking two, not one, but two quantitative research courses. So a little interesting. Um, I do have. I'm pretty excited about. Um, you know. I did a job, my family is really, really important to me, and I couldn't do what I'm doing with the PhD if I didn't have the support mechanisms from my husband and then my kiddos. I have a son that's married, and then my other one is um, actually in college, so we're putting lots of money into the same um, <laughs> same college, so they must like us a lot. Um, <laughs> For that, I live um, just, I put a little um, circle around where I live, so if you've ever flown through or to, if you're not familiar with the Dallas area, I live just a little bit um, west of Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, so I live in a little town called Bedford. It's not really little, but our claim to fame, you know, Texas likes their football, and our claim to fame sometimes is the Trinity High School, which my son plays in the band, and they are, um, they've won state championship so that's where that's really close to where I live and then I was a library media specialist um, for um, I was a library media specialist for let's see nine years K through eight so I have that background I did I tell people too like Tara I mean I grew up with smart I actually had a smart board a 500 series board and my district had 300 series boards um, 14 years ago I was trying to figure it out so I've actually grown up with smart and I also taught grades three, three four and five so pretty pretty exciting that get to put that passion into a bigger broader um, use I think um, and we're really excited that you're here and you know can't wait to connect with you hopefully you know for some of you if you're coming to Texas for ISTE look us up I'll be there so it's in San Antonio so definitely if you're around um, find me as I'll be around um, in San Antonio this year um, all right so with that, um, I'm going to switch this over so I can see the whole agenda. So we've done our welcome. Well, I'll talk about some introductions, our purposes and our objectives, just trying to keep, you know, what is this all about. We hopefully, those of you who've gotten on the Today's Meet, I know some people um, for some reason, maybe, I know Today's Meet had some issues or was migrating over to something this weekend, so maybe there was, there's still some some maybe troubles or struggles with that, but use that. Um, today's meet is, well, I'm going to show you what it is, but it's a really great way. We, I love, and I think Tara can attest to this, We, the whole go-to webinar, people ask, well, why do you use that? And you can record your sessions and you can interact. But the interaction is, interaction is kind of one-sided. So today's meet is called what, what people call as a back channel. So if you've ever um, done a presentation and you really want to know what people know or have questions without having to volunteer to raise your hand or if you're in a big audience, a back channel will allow you to have kind of a side conversation. So I'll show you that. I'll come back to it. We have a wonderful teacher feature. So every month we'll, we'll have some things and this month we have Jeff Peterson, those of you from Texas, and um, we'll be familiar with the name Jeff Peterson and maybe beyond because he shares his resources. So he's going to be talking about widgets and 
and extreme collaboration. Our theme this month is kind of like getting started for summer and you know maybe you have some time that you want to devote and look around at things that you never have quite enough time to do. This might be a good a uh, good send off or a good stepping stone. I'm going to talk about Course Park. If you're familiar with the smart learning space, I'm going to just talk briefly about that. Tara's going to come back and we're going to find out, you know, we always make our agenda based on, you know, questions and things that we think our 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 customers, our audience, our teachers want to know, but we really want to hear from you. And then you'll see that our next webinar, we're going to skip June just because it's kind of crazy and we're going to do a July kind of a summer fun thing and we'll talk more about that. All right, so how does this work? So I don't know who it was that asked, maybe Mary asked why is she muted. So everybody is muted um, to start off with, but if you look at the screen, there is a question bar that everyone has been using quite well, and there's the, there, there is, it's kind of one-sided, so I can see that Mary asked a question, I don't know what that is, so I think she's referring to today's meet, so I'm going to talk about that. But there is a raise your hand feature. So if you are, um, if you wanted to raise your hand, if you'll see that in your in your box, we'll watch it. And um, Jeff Peterson, actually, he's like multi talented. He's helping us to kind of be on the back end and watching some things. Um, Kelly's joining us from from Katy, Texas, so she just put on the, the question bar. But if you wanted to raise your hand, if it works really well with a mic, um, but if you don't, we can make it work. Sometimes when you don't have a mic or a headset, your computer gets some feedback. So no, no worries about that. But if you wanted to ask us a question, the raise your hand in the panel, in the attendee panel, is a great way to do that. So if you, if Mary, if you wanted to ask that question, please feel free to do that. Just remember that sometimes we'll have the feedback. So a headset works. It doesn't have to be a fancy headset because Tara and I were chatting and we've used our um, both our, our phone headset. So it, it works. Um, I want to remind everyone that the um, webinar is being recorded, so if you are joining us live, we'll have some information for you, but if not, you will, I've, we're going to figure this out, but right now the sessions will be posted on, I have a YouTube channel, and then we're going to probably migrate over to have our North American or Teacher to Teacher webinar where we'll host these. So um, excited for you to, to um, join that way and share those out for your, for your teachers or your colleagues that you work with. So this is today's meet, and um, and here's basically what happens if you go to that todaysmeet.com smart vug the this login it takes you to this page and then you you put your name in there so I'll put Heather Lamb and I'll join and then I can say hi it's Heather from Texas and then when you do that. There it is right there, it populates in. So I can see that we have Myra. So she was at a smart user conference in New York last year. It was great. Oh, look, somebody's joining us from Alaska. Oh, another Heather. Beth is here. Oh, Beth said hi. Um, Liz said hi. Jeff is here. So you can see, you can scroll down. And um, also what's nice is if you... If you are um, have anything you want to share, please do. Maybe you have a website, or yeah, Mary, if you want to join that right now, and you can you can um, put who you are in there in the today's meet. It just keeps it kind of a back. They call it a back channel, and it's just some conversations to to help the conversation be a little virtual more than me just talking or Tara talking. Hey Heather, for those yes. of you that it wasn't working for, I just closed my browser because mine stopped working also and just relaunched it and put in the uh, the website. So oh. if, you're, if it's not working for you, maybe just try that. Cool. Very cool, very cool. So this will stay live for a month um, after today. So if you, if we post, put any um, any websites or anything last month, I know some people put some websites out there. So we're sharing some things. So if you have anything to share, this is a great way to do that. Plus, you'll get a follow up email as well. All right. So why do we do this? Well, a few reasons is that sometimes you know, depending on your audience, depending on your districts, different things. 
sometimes we just live in kind of our own little cluster. So we just want to increase awareness of our products, but also how we're using them. How are they integrated? We definitely want to have those practical tips and tricks. We want to uh, uh, help find resources. So, you know, we've got a lot of resources, but the bigger, broader audience, you guys, um, is the it, you know, you are the expert, so we want to help, we want to help you to connect with others that maybe are an expert in some field that you need some help with. So that's what we're doing, and then just creating an active community. The best professional development that I've ever gone to was from within, and so Tara and I are here to help facilitate it, but really, you guys are the experts. You're the feet on the street. You're the people that are using the technology technology daily and we want to help you to to better use it to find those really neat things to do or to connect you, you with other educators so and maybe you're in a position that you're not in the classroom but sharing that knowledge with others and and thinking about maybe a new tip or trick that you can take to another training things like that all right um, all right, so Mary said she needs help finding resources for other world language teachers and can't find many French resources. So if you know of anything like that, please, please let, let us know so we can connect you to Mary. So um, I'm going to throw out, I have a website, and I don't know if it has things on there, but I have a website that I keep up with for right now. It's Heather's. Um, digital-dashboard.com, so just Heather's digital-dashboard.com, and it's I'm keeping it for the time being, but I have what's called a delicious website, and on there, and on delicious, it's like if I were to open up my computer and share all my favorites, then there's tons of districts that um, share out their lessons, so that it's right on the front page. So that's that's one thing. Tara, do you have anything? Do you have any ideas to help Mary? Um, yeah, Mary, actually I'll grab your um, email off of our list of registrants, and I have a couple of teachers that I might be able to connect you with. Perfect. Yay. So that's the way it goes. So if you're okay. looking for some help, please let us know how we can definitely do that. Um, if she has, oh, Lynn says if she has an account with Edmodo, she can join a community that has many language teachers. There you go. So, and Edmodo is free. If you don't have an account, you can do that. So maybe we can coordinate that as well, Lynn. Awesome. All right. So we're very excited. I could probably do a drum roll, but not that fancy. So sorry, Jeff. But um, so we have Jeff Peterson today, and like I said, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty. I don't know. I think I, I think we're pretty privileged because Jeff is from Texas, but he shares everything out, and he is fantastic. Um, he's kind of one of those guys. I've called him this Uber Geeko um, because, and I think that's you know very. I say that very you know, nicely because he's not the type of person that just says, oh, I figured this out, but he goes beyond that next step. So pushes the limits of everything. So, and I also put, Jeff, if you're familiar with Texas, if you look at the, it's down here where this little arrow, let me make this bigger. So if you're familiar and you um, are familiar with Houston, that area, so just a little Southwest, I guess, Jeff can tell us if I'm right, so that's where Lamar Consolidated is. That's his district that he's in, and he is going to share with us about um, the widgets and extreme collaboration. So let me, um, Jeff, let's see, let me make change you to make you the presenter. All right. Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, good, good to know it's working. <laughs> uh, Always. <laughs> yeah. We've had our fun with that a few times. We have. It's technology. you, you got to love it. All right. Absolutely. All right. Um, Heather was introducing me. My name is Jeff Peterson. I'm an instructional technologist uh, with the Lamar Consolidated Independent School District, which Heather had correct on the map. It's just a little bit southwest of Houston. Um, I've actually been I've been in this district now for 15 years. I've been instructional technology for just about nine years now. Uh, I've done quite a few quite a few different things. I 
work with Smart all the time and have a good old time with it. So uh, Heather asked me to show a couple of things, the Extreme Collaboration and Widgets. I'm going to start with the Extreme Collaboration. If you're not familiar with this, this is a, a currently it's in its beta release, but it's available to anybody who wants, who wants access to it. It works really well. It released, if I recall, end of January. It is an add-on for Smart Notebooks, so it's a third-party software. Smart does not actually develop it. Somebody else developed it. And when you install it, it installs directly into Smart Notebook, and it becomes an add-on. So if you're familiar with using the Activity Builder, it's an add-on just like the Activity Builder is an add-on. Uh, this is uh, uh, for what I've designed. If you have the capability, this one is I've designed a little bit so you can get a basic idea of how this works. You'll be able to actually interact with the lesson, the little lesson examples that I've put together. So if you've got a computer, a smartphone, an iPad, whatever it happens to be, if you've got internet access capability, I'm going to let you uh, interact with my lesson. I did see a comment pop up saying test it in your district. It may be blocked. That is a possibility, so you may, may need to work with your network, the network technology department to get it unblocked. We have fun in our district because there's only one small portion of it that's blocked, and that deals with an email that comes from the company. And, uh, but fortunately, you can activate the email anywhere, including a smartphone, so they just usually use like a personal email or something else, and it works just fine. Um, but I will talk a little bit more on the technical side as we start working through it. All right, extreme collaboration. I was giving you already a basic intro of it. Uh, Extreme-collaboration.com. That's the general website of where it can be down uh, directly downloaded. It'll take you out to a website. Let's see, I think I've got it open. Yes, I do. It'll take you out to the extreme collaboration website. On the website, there is a link to download it. So you can click here to download. This can also be found if there's a notebook file on the Smart Exchange that you can find a notebook file that has some basic directions along with a version of the installer built into the notebook file. So you can take it from there as well from the Smart Exchange. Just I believe you just have to search uh, Extreme Collaboration. All right, but the Extreme Collaboration, very, very simple little program. When you download it, it's very small. It's a very small program. When you download, you install it. It takes probably a whole four or five seconds to install. It installs very, very quickly. Uh, what's great with it is it works with any Internet-enabled device. So kids can use their own smartphones. They can be on a laptop. Teachers I work with, because I, I am in a predominantly low socioeconomic school district, so there's not a lot of money floating around. Uh, but a lot of the kids have smartphones, but we do have kids that don't have access to them or may have limited access. So in situations like that, our campuses do have some, uh, some laptops, some iPads, so a lot of the teachers will supplement because give or take probably 60 to 80 percent of the kids will have a smartphone. And then we pull in a laptop cart to accommodate that last few kids, the four or five kids that might not. So everybody can participate in the lesson using Extreme Collaboration. All right, how Extreme Collaboration works, like I said, it's a small download. You install it. Once you install, you'll need to go over to your Add-ons tab, which in my case on my left-hand side, my little puzzle piece. When I click on my puzzle piece, I now have a new icon in here. By default, Activity Builder comes with Smart Notebook 11. Now that I've installed Extreme Collaboration, I get this nice little button. When I click on it, First thing it's going to ask me to do, to do is connect. Uh, this has got it because it utilizes internet. It has to go out, read internet, and connect to the Extreme Collaboration servers. The first time you connect on a computer, it is going to ask you to activate. That's where we have our little filter issue in our district. You have to type in an email address. You click on, uh, you click activate. They send you a, an email that has a link in it. You click on the link, it activates the software for that computer. What's nice is the link they send you, you do not have to be on that computer to activate. I can activate it from anywhere. So oftentimes teachers are blocked from being able to activate it within our district. I tell them to send their email to me. I pull it up on my smartphone. I activate it on my smartphone. I email them back and say, okay, try it now. Oh, it works. So I just 
it does not have to be on that computer, which is a nice thing. All right, once I've connected, it's going to pop up. It's going to ask me about logging in. It even tells you login is optional. You do not have to log in. I almost never log in. So I can tell you that point, uh, point blank, I almost never log in. Then it's going to ask me about session. How do I want my students to join anonymously or enter a name? If you're in a school, you already know. You want them to enter a name. Uh, the login feature, if you do go through the login feature, you can actually set up class rosters on the Extreme Collaboration servers, so they have to log in with a specific name. I'm not going to go there. Now, none of the teachers I've worked with have ever had to do that. Uh, for today's session, though, I am going to go anonymous. I very rarely do anonymous, but I will for today. And then just simply click on Start. When I click on Start, it's going to pop up some basic information. It's going to give me this ID. This is, a, this is a join ID. This is how students would join my activity. Now, I would like you, I'd like you to join, or as many people as possible, to join my session. I've, I've never pushed and tested this this large, so this is actually going to be quite entertaining. But I, this is my session ID. The question is, where do you enter the session ID? What's real nice is they make it very quick and simple for us. I click on this drop-down arrow, and you'll see this button that says Insert QR Code. I'm going to click on that. It's going to automatically navigate to the next page. If you're familiar with QR codes, you can go through a QR code route, scan the QR code, it takes you directly to the website. If not, the website you need is right at the top of the screen, add2nb.com. So just go to this website, add2nb.com, and it's going to ask you to type in that ID number. So I'm going to ask you, ask a few of you to go ahead and do that. And I see a whole bunch of people kicking in already, which is great. All right, it's a very simple thing. When you type in that web, when you type in the number, you'll see it automatically connects you to the session. It gives you a little thing about a message. It says the activity has not started. Well, that's because I have not started my activity yet. You'll see it says random position. I've got some options down in here I can play with. I've not started my activity. I'm going to go ahead and navigate into my first activity, which is a page built within my notebook file. So you can see I've got several pages. So my next, next, oops, let me get back to my activity here. My next page, I'm going to ask a simple question. What's your favorite color? This is going to allow you to text in the answers. Right now, you can't do anything until I hit start activity. So I hit start activity, and you can see everybody is already sending in messages. It's working out extremely well. I have messages coming in from all over. All right. As you can see, this, this actually looks like it's been very successful. It's working extremely well. I'm going to set that just in case somebody else needs to join. All right. That's chart, chart reuse. Okay. That's an, I don't know that color. Okay. Pretty cool. As you can see, that worked extremely well. People were sending messages from all over. Now, in the case like this, I do have a section in here called Students. I may want to know who sent what. Now, because I'm in anonymous mode, it's going to say anonymous. If I had made you, if I had chosen the option to go with a name, you would have had to type your name before you could send a message. So hey, I want to know maybe, yes. Jeff, sorry, it's Heather. Can you put up the QR code just one more time? Absolutely. All right. But with the list of students that are showing up here, I can figure out who sent what message. I can see right here. Okay, now I've got Magenta showing up here. That's okay. That's not a problem. <laughs> I can see how many times people have sent. This one has a number two on it. So whoever anonymous is here has sent in two messages. I did. I did not restrict you from. I think the current restriction you can send up to three messages in the current settings. But you can see it's giving me all these options. If I were working, I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to my blue is best. Okay. Uh, I'm going to navigate back over here. I can start selecting certain ones. Now, these had student names. As you can see, I've got some of them that are so, whoops, getting back over there. I've got some of them that are circling. You can see the ones that are getting circled. These are getting circled because I'm highlighting them over here. I'm highlighting them over on the left-hand side. If you had student names, I would know who sent what. I could very quickly come in here and click on it. It would tell me exactly who sent that because it, had, would have their name instead of anonymous, it would have their name. So if they're sending anything inappropriate, you do have that capability to catch them on. All right. So at this point, we finished up this 
particular question, I'm going to stop the activity. When I stop the activity, it's going to lock you out from being able to send any more messages. You'll notice your screen on your device that you're sending from is now locked out. It says activity not started. You're still part of the session. My ID hasn't changed. You're just locked out. So from a standpoint now, I could come in here. These things are fully editable. I can start moving them around, categorizing them if I need to. Let's find out who needs what. I can very quickly make, make my rearrangements on the screen because this is all regular editable text, so I can make changes to it if I wanted to. Very, very neat little feature. Uh, just to show, advance a little bit more on what it can do, here's when I was putting together a more practical application of it. Major powers of World War II, the Axis and Allied powers. Now, don't panic. I'm not putting you on a spot, and we are still anonymous, so you can, you can say Switzerland all you want. I'm okay with that. But in this case, I have categories. I want my answers to show up under specific categories. I have an activity section drop down on the side. I got list by category. You've got a couple of different types of lists and a couple of stacks. I'm going to do list by category. When I do list by category, every object on this page it recognizes. I just have to say, what are my categories? So axis and allied powers are my categories. And I'm going to start the activity again. Now, in this case, once I start the activity, you now have the ability to start sending in answers. You also now have a drop-down arrow. So you can choose which one is the allied power and which one is the axis power by selecting the drop-down arrow, typing your answer, and clicking send. And it will begin to send them to the appropriate category. Very, very neat feature to help force those kids to recall information, remember the facts, all that kind of situation that comes into play. Very, very neat. Love it to death. You can do so much with that. All right. For time's sake, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to stop that activity. Other, other things I've developed with it, compare apples to oranges. Again, another category one. I could very quickly just call this a list by category. My category, apple, both, orange. Utilizing both the Venn diagram at the same time. My three categories are those three. The kids can choose their category. You can have more than two categories. I've had, mo I've had up to eight categories I've used at one time. But you can do a lot of different things in that regard. Um, other settings it does have the capability of. You can tell it to attach the sender's name, so whoever sent it will pop up with what they sent. They can allow text color, so you can send in the four, color, uh, four main colors of smart, the black, the red, the blue, and green. Fonts, I'm not too worried about. It usually takes the font of the category heading. Uh, I won't talk about images because you don't have that capability. Messages per, ser per user, I can restrict you so you only get to send one message at a time, and then that's it. Very, very neat. Uh, the other options that are under the activity type, there's a list and stack. Well, you already saw a list by category. List, uh, the single list just creates a list starting in the top, corner, top left corner and starts going down. Stack literally stacks all the answers on top of each other. So one comes in, the next one comes in, the next one comes in. They're all piled right on top of each other. Uh, what I found useful for that is when you send it in as a stack, now I can come in and pull things out. The kids responded, talk about it. OK, done with that one. Move on to the next one, pull it out, talk about it, pull the next one from the stack. So we only talk about one thing at a time. All right. When I am finished with the activity, I've finished everything, I do have the capability of stopping my session. When I stop my session, this is going to log you out on your devices remotely. Uh, mine is, I had a device up next to me. It just told me my session was closed. Now that session ID number is no longer valid. I would have to start a brand new session, get a brand new session ID, possibly a new QR code if you're doing the QR code, in order to get this stuff going again. It is a very, very simple feature. Uh, other things that I have done with it, I've started developing uh, I, other ideas other than just throwing stuff up like that. I've come up with like gaming ideas. Here's a simple gaming idea. Break the groups, break the kids into two groups, nouns and verbs. I, the first group to name 10 of their category from a paragraph I've got hidden below wins, wins the race. Now, in this case, for time's sake, I'm not going to have you competing against each other. 
but I can immediately clear the paragraph, the kids go, they find their 10 ver verbs or 10 nouns, whoever gets 10 up there first wins. Uh, I can do a team little one where they've got, this one I've got them in four team, a group of four, uh, four teams, and this is math oriented. So it's going to be the first team to answer the question gets the points. I've got a little question, pull it out. I throw the question out there, they have to solve it, they text it in, it pops up, I should be able to see who got it in first. Lots of different ideas on it. This one was just a simple race. I actually spaced out the, this area so that you can get 10 questions. Will come, the 10th answer will appear below the line. So they don't see each other's answers, but the first one to get 10 wins the race. Lots of different possibilities with it. All right. For time's sake, I've got to keep myself moving. Uh, things you can do, I talked about where you can download Extreme Collaboration, extremecollaboration.com. One of the big ones that comes in is training resources. I want training resources. I have developed training resources that are available to the world. I will have this website and information up a little bit later as well, but I have what's called the icafbay.lcisd.org. And on that website, there is a whole slew of training resources that have been made available to you. Uh, I'll come. Let me come back. Let me come back to that one at the end because I want to keep. I'm watching my time. I got to keep moving. All right. So the extreme collaboration, very very cool, very neat feature. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about briefly widgets. If you've not played with widgets, widgets are awesome. They, these are a new feature, part of Notebook 11 as well. Uh, widgets have recently started blowing up a little bit more on Smart Exchange because you do need to download widgets from the Smart Exchange. And there are a lot of widgets available. So far, last time I looked, there were 32 free widgets and then another 15 or so paid widgets. Of course, free is best for us. I will tell you some of the paid ones are very good, too. I've bought most of them. But uh, the widgets are very, very cool because of what they give you. They add a certain level of interactivity to your notebook files. So on this next page, I've got, I pulled a few of the widgets just to show you some quick examples. This widget is the clock widget. Very, very simple widget. It's going to give me some options here. It tells you what to do. Drag the hands to set the clock, write the digital time to set a time. It works in both directions. So in this case, I've, I've pre-written because my handwriting with a computer mouse is horrible. The time on the clock is 12 o'clock, so I pull it down. You'll see it. it does a little animation. Congratulations. I can reset it, start over. I can also, if I need to, I can actually set the time. So if I want the kids to be able to come through and figure out, okay, what time am I talking about here? They, they have to read the analog clock. They come up and they pull their answer into, the, they write their answer on, and again, it tells them right or wrong. It gives them a little animation, have fun with it. Uh, distance converter, same thing, drag a number, write a number, set your measurement angles. I'm moving very, very fast, I do know that. Uh, so it will, will convert it. So you can go quite a few different measurements here, how many feet, versus meters. Very, very quick, simple. It does give us some a little options. I can inject it directly into the page so I can do comparisons between a variety of different things if I need to. I, I can lay that out very fast, very easy. Um, embed widget. The embed widget may or may not be on the exchange. It pops up on the exchange for a while and it disappears. There was a bug in it. I do know that, but it does allow you, it's a very neat widget because you can come in and take code from like YouTube code or anything else. You can paste it in there and it will actually pull that into Smart Notebook. So you've got easy access to it. We'll see if it's cooperating with me today. But it's going to pull the code into Smart Notebook. So now I've got a YouTube video if you've got YouTube access or any other embed code and I can play it directly within Notebook without actually having to go anywhere. Oh, that's one of the videos I created. Okay. I can do stuff that I, I can pull this stuff without having to go out to the internet. I don't get all the advertisements. I don't have to navigate. It's part of my notebook file, pre-saved. Um, it has been tough to find it on Exchange. Like I said, I know there was a bug with it. That may be why it's disappeared from the Exchange. Uh, push comes to shove, I can probably email it to you if you email me. It's not a, not a tough thing for me to put together as a notebook package that you can install into your gallery. Other things, like I said, I got to keep moving. I'm watching a pet time. Um, I'm just going to skip past that one because something takes a little bit to load. Measuring cup. If you've got students working on measurements, they can come in here, handwrite a measurement in, 
Now they've got to figure out what do I have to put in here to make it equal seven teaspoons. I can utilize tablespoons or I can just do seven teaspoons. It does give us some settings where I can actually go in and modify what I want it to be. Maybe I want them finding cups instead of instead of teaspoons and tablespoons. I can pull all, I can change all those settings according to what I'd like. Uh, let's see, keep moving. Money, great, great money counting one. So if you need to count money, you can pull money. The kids have to pull up the money to figure out how much how much they need to make it equal that. Again, I'm going to keep moving. Time is a big factor. I'm watching very closely. Love this one, the random object selector. In this case, I just kind of threw up some pictures of kids. You can put names, pictures, questions, whatever you want. When you hit go, you'll see it randomly selects an object from this page. If no repeat is turned on, it will not select the same. It will not select somebody again. I've turned it off, so it could select the same guy again. But very simple widget, but it works really well for randomly selecting some a question or a student in the class. Hey, timers. Jeff. They've got a couple of different timer account counts. Yes. On that one, yes. um, an example that I've shared is um, putting some sort of math problems up there, and it'll just quickly put some numbers up there, math problems, and then it'll randomly, and the kids have to turn and talk and tell how they would solve it. So just Absolutely. another idea for that. Or go, you know, for social studies, maybe find the location on a map, things like that. So it's, it'll randomize anything um, on the page. All right, yes. you're doing great. Yes, I do like that. It is a neat one. Thank you, Heather. All right, talked about. I briefly mentioned the timers. You can have a couple of different timers. It can be a countdown or a stopwatch, either one you want. Work, they work extremely well. And you can set the timer if it's a countdown to do something automatically. So if you have a question on the page and they only get 30 seconds to answer and you're moving on to the next question, I can set the timer that way, or well, that would be minutes. I can set the timer and say, okay, when the timer expires, automatically advance to the next page. So when that timer hits zero, they don't get a look at the page anymore. It automatically moves to the next page. So you could be somewhat cruel if you wanted to. All right. Um, the original widget, Voki widget. If you're not familiar with Voki, Voki.com, very, very cool talking avatars. This was one of the original, this was pretty much one of the original widgets for Notebook 11. It's similar to the embed widget, but with a Voki widget, I can take the code, embed it. It's going to pull a Voki straight off the Voki website. Uh, my internet connection, I can see, is running a little slow, but that's my own fault. I have like eight devices currently connected to the internet. Uh, but it will pull the Voki down, and the Voki, it's talking avatar, so you can actually get the Voki to, uh, Voki to talk. Great for giving little uh, instructions, especially when you're talking, if they're using like a smart board in centers, they can come up to the smart board, hit play. It has instructions that it talks out to them. This one just simply says hello. Uh, hello. But it will do it will do the very simple things for them. Great, great little instructional tool. There are a lot of people who have done some great things with it. Um, I do know with the Voki widget, you can actually use other embed code with it. I do know though with Notebook 11.1, .1, which came out this spring, there's been a little glitch with that, but if you're working with any version of Notebook 11 uh, prior to 11.1, .1, you actually have the ability to resize this to make it fit any kind of other embed code. So if you're having problems with the embed widget, you might be able to get away with using the Voki widget. I did a whole thing on that a while back, but I'm going to skim on past that for time's sake. Where do you get widgets? Smart Exchange. Exchange.smarttech.com. Easiest way to find them, when I get to the Smart Exchange website, right at the top, click on search. It's going to pop up this little dialog box full of all kinds of information. When I scroll down, over on the side, there's a, a series of links. There's one right here that says widgets, currently 32 widgets on the exchange. When I click on widgets, it is going to narrow everything out, and it's going to give me strictly the widgets. There are a bunch of them. Uh, what I like to do is I like to come in and click newest first because I've downloaded almost every widget there is. So I'll come in and newest first and see if there happens to be any new widgets. Here's the latest widgets that came out actually I think within the last couple of months. But there are a lot of great widgets, very quick and easy to download. Simply click download. You do have to have an account with Smart Exchange, but easy enough. There are free accounts. You can find that here's one that's a paid widget, so it'll tell you how much it's how much you have to pay to have that widget. 
I don't think there's a lot of paid widgets on my, online. Most of them are free. Very quick to find them. Once again, go to the exchange, exchange.smarttech.com, click on search, scroll down, click on widgets. That will get you all the widgets that are currently available on that smart exchange. All right, so that is getting the widgets. Uh, last thing I wanted to share, I was mentioning a website that I have earlier. This is a website run within my own school district, the icafe.lcisd.org. If you're not familiar with it, you are welcome to go to it. Lots of free resources that are available for you to download. When I get to that website, at the very top, there's a link that says resources. Just click right on the resources page. It'll take you to this new web. It'll take you to this page. You'll see these little tiles. There's one tile in, this, in there called smart. I have created all these smart cheat sheets and some videos. They are free for anybody to access. So you have access to it right at any time. You come in here, you can see it breaks it down a little bit. Smart Notebook, so I can click on it. It's got categories. I've got sections in here about all the widgets, all the free widgets. I've tried to create little uh, cheat sheets, help information, possibly some videos on all these different widgets that are available. So you can come in. Here's the Vokey widget. Here's a little download. There's some links right here that allow you to download PDF cheat sheets. You can download them, share them out, whatever you need. You're looking for extreme collaboration. That is an add-in. Here's extreme collaboration. So I can pull up extreme collaboration. We are mentioning that one earlier. So right here, here are some videos. There are three videos step-by-step. Step, shows you every pro the whole process. There are little PDF cheat sheets that you can very quickly pull up as well if you want to. And I just refreshed my page here. So you can very quickly just click on the uh, click on the link. It's going to open up a PDF that is it, all these cheat sheets are one page of instructions. That's it. There's nothing tricky or too fancy about it. You don't have to read through a lot of information. One page. That's it. There it is. I can print it. You can save it. Email it out to other people. These are completely completely free and accessible for you. This is something we developed for our own district use. But we looked at it and said, let's share it with the world. We have no problem with sharing. All right. Uh, other stuff, there are other things I have out there. I do upload my lessons to the Smart Exchange. If you search the keyword LCISD and you're on the exchange, you can find any lesson I've created. I, I upload what I can as long as it's not going to violate anything copyright-wise. I do develop a lot of lessons for in-house using LCI, our district purchase curriculum, so I can't share those. But I do share what I can. Uh, you are welcome to contact me. I've got my email address right here on the screen. My Twitter handle is on there as well. You are welcome to contact me. I will share anything and everything I can. I'm more than willing to answer questions. I do get a lot of questions quite frequently from people I've never met from all over the world. I will answer any question I can answer. If I can't answer it, I will certainly try to find an answer for you. All right. I know that was a lot of information, very, very fast. But I do want to thank you for spending some time with us. And I will now turn it back over to, am I going to Tara or Heather? Heather. Uh, Are you? Heather.